Hi guys, welcome back to another Hugh Jeffries video. In this video, I'm going to be restoring this iPad mini, which I purchased alongside an iPad mini 2 at the beginning of the year for $100, making each iPad only cost $50. The mini 2 has already been restored in a previous video, but this iPad mini first generation posed a bit more of a challenge. It currently has a cracked screen, which isn't responding to touch correctly, a very dinted housing, and the charging port while still working is very loose and likely to break very soon. So a new one will need to be soldered on. This iPad is currently running iOS 9.3.5, which is the latest version of iOS that this iPad supports. To get into the iPad and begin repairing it, I'll need to remove the screen. Now usually, heat needs to be applied to loosen the adhesive and pull the screen away from the frame. However, the screen on here is such a low quality installation job that I could literally pull it up with my fingernails. With the screen removed, I can remove the four screws holding in the LCD panel. The one thing I really like about these older iPad minis is the fact that the screen and digitizer is separate, making repairs easier and cheaper to do. I can then remove the four remaining screws in this metal shield. Uh, there is actually supposed to be significantly more. However, this thing is missing loads of screws. More missing screws are to come, as you can see here with this metal bracket, which hides the battery, LCD, and digitizer connections, which will need to be disconnected. Now for this iPad mini, I'm going to also be replacing the housing. So I sourced out a replacement housing from someone online. Now I also had a parts mini 2 which I used to restore the iPad mini 2 from a few weeks ago. Now the reason this iPad needs a new housing is the fact that if I install a new digitizer uh, piece of glass which is the top layer of the iPad screen assembly, it won't sit flush and will allow a dust to get underneath it as the dented corners actually will keep the glass uh, lifted from the metal frame of the iPad. So to avoid this, I'll need to change the frame with one that doesn't have dented corners. And for that, I'm going to be using a donor iPad mini, which has a dead logic board that has no power when connected to the charger. So to do this, I'll need to disassemble the iPad and remove everything that I'll need to transfer across. For the most part, that is just the logic board as all the other components of the iPad are already installed in the new housing. Now I'll need to flip over the iPad and heat up the back because you guessed it, more adhesive. The logic board of the iPad is actually held down by adhesive, unlike screws found in, say, an iPhone. This makes the repair more difficult and you also run the risk of snapping the logic board. Now the dock connector, which I'll need to replace in a minute, is also soldered to the board, um, which makes repairs much more difficult and also needs to be removed at the same time when you're removing the logic board from the iPad housing. With that removed, we can take a look at actually fixing up the dock connector and for that I'm going to need a solder rework station. Now you can see here just how loose the connection is. Now while it is still charging uh, and syncing with iTunes, I run the risk of it failing in a few weeks or just after a few charges. So I thought why not replace it and to do that I'm going to need to desolder it. So I applied some flux to the connector and started heating away with my solder rework station. Now I'm completely new at this sort of micro soldering, although I have done uh, many soldering jobs in the past. Now, from what I can tell, all I need to do is really heat up the area and apply as little pressure as I can when removing it, as you don't want to rip up any solder pads on the logic board of the device. So this actually took a couple of minutes. That's probably due to the fact that I didn't wait for my rework station to heat up. And it's not a very expensive one either, so it's probably not very accurate temperature wise. Anyway, with enough heat and some slight pressure, it's removed from the board. I added some more flux and moved across to the soldering iron portion of my solder rework station and tried to remove the remaining solder with the solder wick. However, it's not a very good soldering iron. Moving along, I can apply some solder paste, being careful not to apply too much. I sort of just used a spudger to spread it out as best I could. Then I can come along with the hot air and after heating it up, you can see it all group to its correct pads. If you apply too much solder, then you may bridge pads and have to use the solder wick to desolder it and start again. With some more flux added, I can reposition the new dock connector and heat everything back up and solder it into place. Now I did notice I didn't solder it on very straight, so I reheated it and lined it up better. With everything now 
uh, ready to go. I can test out the iPad after letting it cool down for a little bit. And sure enough, it actually worked and my iPad is charging once again. So now that I know everything is functioning, I can use some cleaning alcohol to clean off any flux or solder residue on the parts we just soldered. Connecting up the surround and screwing it into place, I can move back along to the new iPad housing and clean up all of the old adhesive which is left behind from the old screen that was once on this iPad. Now the iPad logic board that was in here that I've already removed is completely dead. It showed no signs of life and probably has something wrong with the power management chip on the board. I might try and repair that iPad in another video one day, but for now I'm just going to use this working logic board to bring this iPad housing back into functional order. So I can install the new logic board and stick down the dock connector and start to reassemble the speakers which had to be removed to fit the dock connector back into the frame. With those screws installed, I can reroute some antenna cables and begin plugging in all of the connections for various parts of this iPad. It's always a good idea to test out the iPad before you seal it back together and after you've connected everything, this just verifies that the iPad is fully functional before you assemble it. Now I noticed that I installed the speakers incorrectly as they have contact points that connect to the dock connector. However, I installed the contact point underneath the dock connector so it wasn't making any sort of a connection and therefore the speakers weren't working. Swapping those around and installing them correctly, my sound is now working and I can continue reassembling this iPad mini. Applying any stickers needed to be installed, I can then give the iPad mini a clean down before I can reinstall the LCD screen and digitizer back onto the iPad. Now for those wondering, I did apply the little piece of tape which goes across that dock connector that we just soldered to stop it shorting out. Then I could install the bracket covering up the LCD, digitizer and battery. And finally install this giant metal plate which has an absolute load of screws which were previously missing. I installed all the screws that it's supposed to have and even gave it a bit of a clean. However, it didn't come up perfect but nobody's going to see that. I can then install the four screws to hold the screen in and then it's time to reinstall adhesive on the sides of the iPad. The screen itself does come with adhesive but as I've known from past repairs on iPads it just doesn't like to stay in place. So I'm using this super strength industrial grade adhesive which will definitely keep the iPad screen in place and stop it from lifting up like I've seen in the past. After that's installed, I can give the LCD a really good clean as it was very dirty and had lots of dust in it given the old screen wasn't adhered properly to the frame. Removing the protective film from the new adhesive on the sides and on the actual digitizer and giving everything one last clean, I can then press the new screen down into the iPad mini. I like to start by positioning the bottom of the iPad screen and then the top so everything is aligned correctly and then I can press down the sides and seal everything into place. Of course, this isn't a complete repair without removing the plastic film and installing a tempered glass screen protector. And we're done. So this is it, an iPad mini that was once cracked, had a bad housing and a very loose dodgy dock connector has now been restored into something nice and respectable. The housing installed has a few marks but no major dents. The dock connector is brand new and functions flawlessly and the screen is also brand new and has no marks or scratches. Just to compare the two dock connectors, this is the before and this is the after with very little wiggle whatsoever. You can see the old housing had a few dents in it which would have stopped the new glass panel from sitting flush against the frame and would have eventually allowed lots of dirt and dust to enter the iPad. Unfortunately, this iPad mini runs iOS 9 and with Apple not allowing downgrades, it's going to be painfully slow for years to come. At least it's in one piece and is functioning, so it's good enough for a child or maybe even an elderly person. All up, I paid about $75, which is probably what you'd expect to buy one of these here in Australia. And for those wondering, the battery health is at 97% and only has 116 charge cycles. Now in terms of repairability, the iPad mini does poorly. While it can technically be repaired, almost everything is glued into place and the dock connector is soldered, which complicates repairs further. 
And on that note, this has been a Hugh Jeffries video. If you like what you saw, hit that subscribe button and consider checking out the iPad playlist for more videos just like this one. Also, make sure to follow me on my social media, link for which is down in the description. That's all for this video, and I'll catch you guys next time.